Hey guys, um, I'm back with another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Mavic Air 2. Uh, it was just released yesterday, I think. And this thing looks insane. Um, straight off the bat, first impressions, I think this is gonna be a game changer in the drone industry um, for what you get for the money. Anyone that's looking to get into drone filmmaking or photography, this is the drone I would recommend, uh, full stop. But we're gonna get into uh, why that's the case uh, right now. So let's go ahead and roll that intro and get into it. All right, so we're gonna kind of just break down the stats as that I see that being the, the biggest thing to look at when buying a new drone. I mean, it's got a new design, but we'll talk about that later um anyways so getting into it we start with the new sensor so it has a one inch or sorry not a one inch a half inch sensor size it's a little bit of an increase it just it bumped up from uh one over 2.3 which is i mean if you do the math it's like a 0.4 inch sensor versus a 0.5 inch sensor so you know a tenth of an inch makes a little bit of a difference not a huge difference um what i would say is if you are looking to get a drone with a larger sensor spend the extra cash, spend the extra dough, get that Mavic um, Pro 2. It has that full one inch sensor. It's gonna be much, much larger than anything you're gonna find on either the original Mavic Air or the new Mavic 2, uh, Air 2. So spend that extra money if you want the larger sensor. If not, the new sensor, it's larger, it's great. You can get a uh, lower light video, um, but to me it's not that big of a deal. It's not that much of a bump up, but it's still great, nice that we have it. Um, next, we kind of look at that sensor more in depth. What does the photo capability of it look like? What does the video capability of it look like? So on the photo side, it is a 48 megapixel camera. Wow, DJI, you kind of just went all in. <laughs> I mean, the original, this guy, um, it shoots 12 megapixels. So they were just like, oh, we're gonna multiply it by four and quadruple the quality of this photo camera. Which is awesome, because one of the things I will say about this camera and shooting photos on it is that you have to shoot horizontally it doesn't have you can't like move the camera vertically which you could on the original mavic air or mavic pro sorry yes mavic yes mavic pro whatever um so when you're composing for an instagram post something that might be a vertical image it becomes much harder because you need to take into account that cropping it is going to make it look terrible you cannot crop your photo on a mavic air if it's a horizontal photo, you cannot crop it four by five in the middle because it will just look terrible. So when I'm taking photos that I know are going to be a vertical aspect ratio, I have to turn my drone a different direction so that I can use the full sensor effectively. With a 48 megapixel sensor, which is gonna be now on the new one, you'll be able to crop no problems um, and it won't be an issue. So composing photos is gonna be much, much easier with this new sensor. The video, how does the video look? It's not a huge bump. Um, the only major thing is we get 4K60. Um, the larger sensor size like we talked about will in turn be nicer footage. It'll be a little bit wider, a field of view. Um, the depth of field will be a little bit better and you'll be able to shoot a little bit less, a little bit lower of light, which means your crane will be a little bit lower. But other than that, I mean, the only like stat bump is that it's 4K60. That's pretty cool. I mean, if you wanna shoot you know, action video in 4K in slow-mo, that's massive. For me personally, I shoot everything in 4K at 4K24 anyways, because I think it's the most natural looking, best footage for, for drone video. I don't think that, uh, you know, slowed down drone footage looks the best. Um, that's my personal opinion. You might be different and you might need to have 4K60. So it might be beneficial for you. I will say personally, it doesn't matter to me. It is not a reason that I would upgrade. Um, next, it's got new HDR compatibility. So on the original, on this guy, you could only shoot um, HDR in photo mode, it was something you had to turn on, buried in the settings, it was hard to deal with, and it honestly didn't look the best. Um, but on the new one, you can shoot HDR in everything. You can shoot HDR video, HDR photos, and HDR time lapses, which is pretty cool. Um, to me, I'm most excited about the fact that it's got HDR in video, because one of the things that sucks about this drone, or maybe not sucks, but it's frustrating, is that you cannot film into the sun. The only way you're gonna get really good footage out of it, and it'll be really good, but the only way to get really good footage out of this drone is to shoot perpendicular to the sun. If you try to shoot into the sun or away from the sun, it will not look good at all. Trust me. So having HDR support, you know, maybe we'll be able to shoot into the sun or a little bit closer to the sun and we won't get weird, you know, artifacting. And so that's really, really interesting. I think that's gonna be a huge plus for anyone who purchases this drone. Um, 
Next, we have 8K time lapses. I know this is a huge thing for a lot of people. I personally don't shoot time lapses with my drone. Um, I only have three batteries and using one battery for that time lapse it seems like a waste to me. I'd rather get other footage, but maybe I would use it in the future. Also, 8K time lapses, that's huge file sizes that I don't want to deal with. That being said, I'm sure there are people that love the idea of having an 8K time lapse and that will be very beneficial for them. I'm just saying, personally for me, it doesn't affect me that much and so it, it doesn't excite me in the way that other things that this drone does. Next, we have what battles it out with another thing um, for the number one reason this drone is insane um, and that's the battery life. The battery life on this guy is awful. It shoot, it's 21 minutes on a good day with no wind and not flying fast. When you fly fast and with wind, it's you know 15 minutes. It's terrible. I'm always bringing it up, always bringing it down. And this drone has a drum roll please, 34 minute battery. It is 33% better than the Mavic, the original Mavic Air. And that is a huge plus. It means that you can spend more time in the air flying and taking photos and videos and less time switching out you know, batteries and trying to make sure you don't crash it on the uh, descent back to your landing pad or whatever it may be. Um, and something that maybe like is less, you might not be as intuitive, but let's say you're you're just getting into drone flying and this is an intro level drone. So you're, you've never flown a drone before, you don't know how it works and you're trying to learn with a effectively 15 to 20 minute battery on this guy, it's hard to learn because you get up there, it takes, you know, five minutes to get into a position where you can actually fly it and then five minutes to get down. So you only get five to 10 minutes of actual practice time. It's not a lot and it takes forever to get used to flying a drone like this. With an extended, you know, battery life on a drone, it means you get more time in the air, which means you have more time to practice your maneuvers and learn the ins and outs of this drone, how to use it more effectively. It just becomes easier to learn how to use it. I don't know if that's going to be a big thing for many people, but it was something that I thought about and I felt was worth mentioning to you guys because I know that a lot of people that watch my stuff are trying to get into their their intro level guys or guys or girls looking to get into filmmaking photography. And so this might be your first drone you purchased and so that might be an important thing to think about and take into consideration. Um, now the other thing that I could consider to be the, the best upgrade of this camera um, or this drone and that's the fact that it's got increased connectivity this guy shoots or can transmit 1080p video at 10 kilometers that is insane that is like i don't know how else to put it that is that's so awesome like i have no other words except for that's that's amazing like i have had so many close calls with this drone with connectivity issues that like Sometimes I just don't even want to fly it because I'm so scared that I'm going to lose it and it's going to fall over the ocean and I'm going to lose it. Um, for instance, I was in Lake Tahoe about a year ago uh, capturing this footage. And I was flying, I was about 400 feet over the lake. It's middle of the winter. There's no way I can get into the lake or even close to where the drone was if something happened. And then all of a sudden, it decided to lose connectivity and I lost all sight of the drone and I was freaking out thinking well that's it I've lost this drone it's over I don't have insurance on it never gonna get it back there goes $800 um, and I was freaking out for about five minutes luckily I was able to regain connection fly at home and it wasn't a big deal but I was definitely freaking out there for about five minutes my it was like negative two degrees out I'm freezing my tail off I'm stressed out. It was not a good experience, and so I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. And so the new one solves that issue. There's nothing more I can say except for having bad connectivity is terrifying because when you lose connectivity, you can't see anything. You're like, it's like trying to drive a car without eyes, right? It's, it's very scary. It's not the most comforting experience. The fact that it can transmit 1080p signal up to 10 kilometers is just, no words for it. That's insane. That is so awesome. Um, that in itself is a reason to upgrade um, or purchase this drone because you're not going to lose it. As easy at least. You might still crash it. But if you're flying far away, having it lose connect connectivity is less of an issue. Um, so this brings us to the question that everyone's been waiting for. Will I be upgrading? No. I'm not going to be upgrading for one reason. And that is the new one's just bigger. I mean, the new one, it's it's fatter, so it's taller, right? 
the new conduct the new controller is much bigger i just i am a very run and gun go quick filmmaker i have a small kit don't bring a lot of stuff with me and so adding the extra weight adding the extra size just doesn't make sense it, it's really more detrimental what i gained from it Right, I go and I bring my drone when I ski or I snowboard because I want to film in the backcountry. I'm not going to bring a big drone back there. So, to me, it, I will not be upgrading. It doesn't make sense, especially with an $800 price tag. It's expensive, don't get me wrong. I, For me, it's not worth an $800 upgrade in order to get the newer version of this drone. That being said, that being said, if you don't have a drone and you are looking into getting a new drone, Hands down, this is the one I suggest. You should immediately purchase this drone. What you get for $800, unmatched to anything else in the industry. This thing is $800 as well, and this one's better than it. Get that. Don't even worry with the Mavic Mini. That one shoots, you know, 1080. It's not a great drone. I mean, if you're a consumer level, you don't care about what your footage looks like. You just want to be able to see the world from a different point of view. Go ahead and get the Mavic Mini. But if you want to get into anything cinematic, get really great looking video, um, make something really cool looking, I would suggest the Mavic Air 2. It's $800, the Fly More combo is I think $1,000, and I would suggest purchasing this drone. Um, yeah, so to conclude, I will not be upgrading, but if you are looking to purchase a new drone, this is what I would suggest. Um, I hope you've enjoyed, I've really enjoyed kind of doing a video like this. I've never done a talking head video, doing a kind of a tech review or reaction type thing. This was a lot of fun. I had fun writing my script out, researching the topic, figuring out what I'm going to say and not sound like a dumb person, which trust me, that'll make sense in like three weeks when I drop a different video. You'll get it. Um, anyways, that's it for me today. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'll be back here uh, next week as well. I think I'm going to start trying to do one video a week to stay sane because I have tons of time. No one's hiring and all the internships were canceled. So I have so much time. Might as well make YouTube videos. So that's what I'm going to do. One video a week for the summer. Sounds good. Okay. That's my plan. Come back next week. I'll be talking about something new. I don't know. I kind of want to do a studio tour. So if you want to see, um, what this t studio looks like and what it took to make it, um, go ahead and drop a like, drop a subscription. Peace.